Not too long ago, we did a episode on composting toilets, how to tell the difference, how to pick a good one. What we didn't tell you was that composting toilets cannot deliver a finished compost. It took us 25 years of living off grid and five different composting toilets to figure that out. Now, composting toilets can begin the process of composting, but they can't finish it. So you've got to finish the job. And today we're gonna to show you how to build a three compartment compost bin. It will do just that. It'll also compost your lawn clippings, your leaves, wood scraps, sawdust, whatever. Now, while you watch us build ours, I'm gonna tell you how we did it, and also why composting toilets can't finish the job. Start by picking a spot that's got a mix of sun and shade, that's reasonably level, and that drains well. Then go out and buy your materials. Now we built ours with eight pavers, four eight foot four by four pressure treated posts, 32 five foot cedar fence planks, and a box of deck screws. Now we cut the four by fours to four feet and our cedar planks, we cut them in half. That gave us enough material to build three bins, four feet high, each 30 inches by 30 inches, and six planks high. The little space between each plank for air circulation. We use cedar because it doesn't rot. The final product isn't that much different from a regular garden compost bin. The difference is not design, but time and heat. Composting manure, including human manure, re Go. retakes both time and heat. And that's why composting toilets can't finish the job. Heated managed composting systems for human manure take four to six weeks to finish the job. Maybe a year if you can't make your pile hot enough. Most composting toilets aren't even heated. And we've never seen an electrically heated composting toilet with a drum or a drawer that's large enough to store six weeks of waste while it composts. And at the same time, accept another six weeks of waste while the first batch composts. So it's either dump the crud in a garbage bin labeled compost, or drop it off at an RV waste disposal site, or toss it in the woods. But it didn't seem right. In fact, none of it seemed right for two folks living off grid and trying to leave a small footprint. So that's how we ended up building our composter. We call him Sturkus. Okay, your compost bin is complete. Remember, we built three bins. Reason for that is we start on the first one, we fill it up, we let it cook, we move on to the second bin while this one finishes. Now, before you start composting, you've got to prepare your compost bin for the bugs. You've got to set the table. That means putting in some dirt, some wood chips, adding a little water and stirring it up. When that's done, you're ready to go. And that's where it gets a bit tricky because composting is really a combination of a little science and a little art. The science is you need carbon, nitrogen, air, and water. The carbon comes from things like leaves, lawn clippings, sawdust, wood chips, and those are what we call the browns. Nitrogen is things like fruit and vegetable matter and human waste. Those are what we call greens. The ratio of, of browns to greens is usually three to one. Then you add the air and the water, and that's the science end of things. The art is finding how to mix all those things together and have it do what you want it to do. And that takes time and patience and experimenting. In terms of the browns, we primarily use uh, wood chips. Uh, and so I fill up this bucket. I'll be putting in, in our compost pile where we've dug a hole where we're going to put our greens and our browns. Where we get our nitrogen is from greens and one of the greens is the uh, waste from my kitchen. Uh, everything natural, like no meats, no sauces, I put in coffee grounds, but no coffee filters or eggshells. They took too long to compost. 
So um, put those in. Okay, we've talked about my kitchen waste for source of nitrogen, but really our biggest source for greens is our um, human waste from the two composting toilets that we have, hence the rubber gloves. Uh, you just kind of have to get over it. I've got a drawer from one of the toilets. So once we've got our greens and our browns in here, we mix it up thoroughly and aerate it so there's plenty of oxygen for those little bugs to work on what we put in here. And then I'll put the sides back on. Notice one side of our device here allows us to remove battens so we can get the material, mix it up, and then put the sides back on again when we're finished. The last secret to a healthy compost pile is water. Now, those little bugs that we're going to rely on to eat up our compost, they need food, but they also need water. Now, your, how much water? Your compost pile should probably be about the consistency of a damp sponge. Now, if your composting toilet separates solids and liquids, you can also use the liquids. In fact, you should if you can, because those liquids are very high in nitrogen. One of those greens that helps that compost be active. So you just, we use, rather than a garden hose, we use a sprinkling can because that way we can spread the moisture around the top of our compost pile. After we're done, we'll turn the pile. That'll aerate it. It'll mix that li those liquids in with the rest of the compost to ensure we get a good, healthy, hot pile. Okay, so how do we know this is working? You know, you've thrown all this stuff in here, you've had water, you've had urine, you've had human waste, you've had kitchen scraps, you've had wood chips. Is it working? Well, when things compost, they get warm. So the first indicator is heat. And if you're composting manure or human waste, the temperature in your compost should be between 130 and 160 degrees. It can be lower than that, but it's going to take longer compost and turn it into usable material. So the first thing you do is come out every couple of days, get one of these thermometers, stick it in, and see what the temp is. And what if it's not the right temperature? Well, there's four rules of thumb to go by. Number one, if it smells, add browns. If it's cold, add greens. If there's no smell at all, Add greens. If it's earthy. All good. Well, that's about all we know about composting. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you soon. On the next episode of Off the Grid with Karen and Grid.